Hello everyone, this is Taryn with Wonderfully Made Handcrafting and I'm so excited to start into this new devotional from By the Well for God called Famous Last Words. Now this devotional was written by Judy Allen and she goes over different people in the Bible and what their last words were and why is it so important. So today I am starting off using this typewriter and I ended up using my little stamping platform from Stamping Up and placing that down so I could get a clear impression of this stamp set. And I'm gonna press pretty hard because I wanna make sure I get all the little detailed um, pieces of this stamp. And then I am going to emboss it with some Ranger's Clear Embossing Powder. Now I did decide to stamp this typewriter on craft paper. I have actually never used craft paper in my Bible journaling before, but I thought it would look nice with all the browns and neutral colors of this kit. And so I decided I would try it out. And after embossing it, I'm going to color it in with a little bit of the black soot distress oxide. Now, as you saw a couple seconds ago, I forgot to prime my paper with some anti-static powder. Usually I have that little baggie that I run over my paper. I frequently do that actually. And so I have a tiny little paintbrush that I use to get all the extra embossing powder that may have stuck to the paper. And that seems to work fairly well as well. Now, since this stamp is so detailed, it was a little tricky to figure out what was part of the typewriter and what was actually supposed to be background. And so I took a little bit of time going through the whole typewriter and figuring that out. Um, and I also wanted to know when you use black soot on craft paper, it actually brings out a lot of the blue tones. So by the end of this page, this little typewriter is actually gonna look more like a dark navy blue. I've been watching a bunch of different mixed media artists and how they use craft paper and seeing all the colors of Distress Oxide and what they actually look on craft paper is really kind of fun. So if you don't have craft paper yourself, I really suggest to go pick some up and play around with it with some Distress Oxides. As I finish up painting this antique typewriter, I decide that I actually want to throw this through my own typewriter and add a little bit of notes to it on the piece of paper. But before I do that, I decide the keys are missing something. They look a little lost in the coloring. And so I grab a white gel pen and I add just a little touch of white to each one of these keys. And I will add a little bit of white to other buttons and stuff around the typewriter. Once I finish that off, it really helps these buttons pop. Now it's about time to send this through my typewriter. I have an older vintage typewriter called an Olivetti Studio, and I find that the older ones actually work way better than the We Are Memory Keepers one. Um, I just feel like they handle paper better, thick papers, thinner papers. I just feel like they work better. Um, so if you have a chance and can find one maybe on Facebook Marketplace, then that is a really good place to pick one up. I'm adding a little bit more white gel pen around this piece of paper that is going through the antique typewriter. It just kind of tricks your mind into thinking it is a white piece of paper. And then I will work on fussy cutting it out. I did take quite a while fussy cutting it out, but I am also going to go through and use an X-Acto knife and get all the little pieces that are background pieces to this typewriter. I'm using the We Are Memory Keepers craft knife to do this. Now you could go to Dollar Tree and pick up a three pack of X-Acto knives. Those could work as well. And I do use those for different kind of projects, but I have really grown to love this We Are Memory Keepers craft knife because the blade kind of wiggles. So it's easier to get around corners. It's not such of a straight line like an X-Acto knife has to do. And um, so I really like this. But if you have a hard time figuring out how to use it, definitely stick with an X-Acto knife. Like I said, there is a learning curve trying to get used to using this kind of craft knife. You also don't have to get all the nooks and crannies out of these little pieces. I just have really grown to love getting very detailed in all my ephemera pieces. And so I've been using these more and more frequently. 
Now these letters up here will spell Hulda, which is the lady that we speak on on day one of Famous Last Words devotional. And I made these using Tim Holtz's new Varsity Alphanumeric Thinlets. And I made them out of felt and flocked paper, which is really cool because they look actually like varsity letters. Um, but I lost the footage for this process video, but you can go check on Instagram. My Instagram has a reel on how I created these felt letters. So go check that out. I'll leave a link down below to my Instagram name. After looking at this cluster, I decided I wanted a little more color to this page. And so I grabbed the florals from the ephemera pack and I'm looking through and deciding which ones I want. And then I'm going to cut around it a little closer to the florals so you don't see as much white. I will also brush the edges with my makeup brush that always is having a frayed burlap distress oxide on it. It's like constantly covered in that stuff. So I never even have to redip it. So I just kind of add a little bit of antiquing kind of to the edges of these florals. I also decided to dog ear this penitent word card. That was what I did all of last month's kit. And I decided to add a little bit of this paper as well. I wanted a little bit more yellow to this. And so I'm just gonna add that to it, kind of like it's peeking out from the back side. This is a super simple tip to add a little bit extra to these word cards. After I have done what I think I want the cluster to kind of look like, I'm going to start working on the background because, you know, backgrounds are my thing. Mixed media kind of backgrounds is something that is going to work so well for this kit. And so I take some more frayed burlap and this makeup brush and I'm going to brush a little bit down and then I'm going to take this vintage fabric stamp. Now this guys is a great starter for some mixed media backgrounds. So I'm going to take this antique linen color and kind of smush it down. And I notice it's very heavy on the beginning. And so I'm going to do a third generation stamp on this, but it still don't get necessarily exactly the kind of stuff I want. I do get a lot of texture, but I ended up going over to using my VersaFine ink and getting a little bit more texture and color in here. Now I did use third generation stamping as well for the VersaFine black ink because I didn't want it to be so harsh with the black because it is just a background, but I think the black works well with this page because I have the black in the typewriter. For a page in the future, I'm hoping to use some VersaFine brown ink. I did just find a little mini cube of a VersaFine brown ink that by the well for God had given out a long time ago in a goodie bag for one of their kits. And so I just found that and I'm so excited to use that with this stamp set. But now I'm going to move on to some crackle paste. So this is like texture paste except it crackles once it dries. And so I'm spreading that through the stencil that came or that was an add-on for this kit and I am so excited with the way it ends up turning out. It ends up looking kind of like lace, like the crackles just kind of crackle in a way that it makes the background look a little bit like lace. I'm letting that background dry and then I'm going to move on to a bow. Now I took this fabric that was an additional add-on. They made a fabric from a spoon flower from one of the designs of the florals and I decided to cut it up and make a little bow out of it. Now if you cut it thinner it is going to be easier to create a bow and these are a little short so it kind of took a little bit of finagling with this. So it's a little tricky. So if you don't want to do that, then that's fine. But it is possible. I want to see if it would be. Um, you can definitely make one. It just it takes a little bit of work. And I did end up using some Fabri-Tac glue in the end to kind of secure the bow more because I didn't want it moving too much since the ends were so short. A little trick I have with bows is not making the knot too tight because then you have room to adjust things like flipping this side of the bow around so I can see more red. To finish up this background, I'm adding a little bit more frayed burlap again into the cracks of this crackling texture paste and that will help you be able to see the cracks better and it gives a really fun look. 
As I start to get an idea for my cluster spacing, I decide I don't want the florals behind the penitent word card, but I'm going to put them on top. And I am starting to glue everything down, including adding a little dog ear to this doorknob communications. It'll just add a little bit more character to this page. As you can see from my process videos within the last six months, I've really grown to love this liquid glue and I hardly actually use my Scotch ATG gun anymore. Not that it doesn't have its own time and place, but I really reach for my liquid glue from Barely Arts the most. As I'm looking at this cluster, it's looking a little too flat for me. And so I'm going to glue this word study card down, but then I'm going to grab my scrapbook.com foam tape. This foam tape is amazing and sticks really well. And so that will end up adding some dimension to the floral pieces. And also the alphas have some dimension being felt. And so that makes me happy. I know my Bible does fill up faster than those who don't use dimension, but that's, that's something that I love. I love having dimension in my pages and it honestly helps me remember the page and what we've studied more because it has that texture and dimension to the page. So here I am, I grabbed a ruler so I could kind of make sure that everything was as straight as possible. The felt didn't really like to stick to the crackle texture paste, so it took a little extra love on these glue pieces. And so just know that for future reference, if you're trying to glue felt, it does probably take maybe some Fabri-Tac glue instead of regular liquid glue, but this ended up working fine. Next, I will add the date to the bottom right hand corner of this page and then I will also grab some Nouveau Drops. I've been really trying to use my Nouveau Drops again because I do like what they add to the end of a page, but also I have so many of them that I want to make sure I'm using them. So I grabbed this olive green color and put that in three places on the page to make rule of three, like a little triangle, and that will be that. If you've enjoyed this page, please like this and subscribe to my channel. You can go ahead and follow me over on Instagram at Wonderfully Made Handcrafting, guys. I hope you have a wonderful day.